inspiration for us as artists to be able to connect. Like I say, um, I've always been a very solitary person. I'm, I'm an isolator naturally. And when I paint, I'm, I'm very, you know, in my own kind of creative bright lane. Um, and so social media has allowed me the peace that I crave from that solitary type of personality that I have. But to be so connected all over the world with this incredible group of artists. Um, and what I discovered as I, I started the Facebook and um, just connected with old friends and you know, started putting up pictures of my paintings and just the usual stuff. And then what I discovered was that there was this culture in um, on Facebook of bloggers and mixed media artists. And it's a very female dominated art form, mixed media is. And when you say mixed media, a lot of people just think, well, you're just using different stuff, right? But actually what's happened is that term has come to mean something bigger. It's actually now um, an art form that's bringing together uh, traditional painting and drawing. Um, there's scrapbookers. There's people who are completely self-taught. There's people that have, you know, master's degrees. It's it's right across the board. There's room for everybody. It's a very collaborative type of culture and, and environment, and it's pretty much all taking place online, um, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on blogs. And it's such an exciting thing to be a part of. And um, some of my some of my goals and aspirations now include. Um, getting into some of these mixed media applications. I, I brought some books just because I'm constantly pouring over, um, especially journaling books. I really, really find them to look at. And these are so cool for anybody. It doesn't matter what kind of art or creativity, or even if you're not creative, it's just such a great way to, um, you know, if you're, if you're a writer, you can learn how to make your writing really interesting and really, you know, different and bring some things out in your stuff that you didn't know were there. As you can tell, I'm very excited about it. <laughs> and what I find is my creative growth is just exponential now that I've connected with this community. It's really an exciting thing to be a part of. Reading other people's experiences to, to not feel alone. To feel like, you know, and there is not a day where I don't read somebody's blog, get completely inspired by just the line they've drawn run to my studio, try to draw that line, and then some new thing comes out of it that's just mine, right? That I'm getting from that person and bringing into my work and being able to uh, turn it into something that's completely unique to me. I'm really excited about learning and I'm really excited about teaching. So I think part of my creative evolution and frustration with this stage of my career was that when you are a painter, you make a painting, you sell the painting, and then you're unemployed. And <laughs> you make another painting, hopefully you sell that painting, and then you're unemployed again. It's a bit of a downer, I have to say. <laughs> I think as a purest fine artist throughout history, the way we made a living was to sell a painting. Um, and what I've been thinking about through all my learning the last couple of years is that I had to make a decision. I had to make a decision if I was going to continue on being a purist, fine artist, make one-off, one-of-a-kind pieces, and sell them once. That, that's kind of that where that starving artist angsty kind of thing comes out of, right? That, that way of thinking. So this is one of the first times I've said this publicly, but I have decided that I'm going to take another route, which probably to somebody who's on this path sounds like a bit of a sellout. For me it's really exciting, so I'm just going to go with it. Um, I would like to see my art on more surfaces. I would like to be a surface designer. I still want to paint, but I don't want to cancel that creative process that comes with the commercial way of thinking. I want to see it. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just constantly exploring different surfaces that I can put my work on. Um, there's a, a really interesting artist in the state. He's in California. He's 
what you call a surf artist. He started out as kind of a graffiti guy. Drew Brophy, his name is. He's a, a brilliant painter, um, and he's also a great marketer, and his wife is a great marketer. And you can look them up, up, um, look them up online if you want to find more about this. But um, they talk about a painting that he did, a really beautiful painting of, of a wave, and he sold that painting for $400. Which to an artist is a really exciting thing when that happens. Then his wife figured out ways of getting that image onto other surfaces like surfboards, um, shoes, all kinds of stuff like that. He's now made $150,000 off that one image. He's still true to his own art form and he's making a living. And I do believe that. For me, that's kind of the route that I'm going to explore now and that I've been kind of exploring for the last year. Um, it's called licensing. Are you, are you guys in the music world like, are familiar with this imagine? Hey, because it's like having a song, right? If you had to sell that song once only ever, you would never eat, right? The hope is that you sell the song multiple that's times. Right, yeah. Is that right? Yeah, the idea is to have residual, try and find a way of having residual income. Where I don't believe they're selling out. They're still maintaining their um, creative image. They're um, still painting in the purest way they always did. Um, but they have partners now that they work with to get their work onto surfaces and they're able to make a living at the same time. The creative process is not about just putting something down on a two-dimensional surface for me anymore. It's about creating a life. And for my life to be um, part of this collaborative culture of artists. Um, and it's given me a lot of hope. Uh, I think I'm, I'm probably one of those kind of stereotypical um, prone to depression, prone to isolation kind of people. If you know, if you looked up starving artists in the dictionary, there might just be a picture of me in one of my darkest <laughs> moments. <laughs> and uh, and so it's really a cool thing to, to not only be making art but to be part of um, this community and have um, just me positive energy and vibes and people to connect with every day, you know, I never have to wallow in that angst anymore. I can still be creative and make what I want to make. I'm doing, um, I start out with uh, drawings like this, writing, painting, collage, lots of collage. This is one of my um, paintings that I actually print, it's a print, and then I glued it in, and then I build on that more. So this is kind of the hub of my creative process, is my, is my journal. It's so incredible. Um, it's a piece, piece of work in itself, yeah. Yeah, well, that's so cool. I wasn't even thinking of these as, um, as really as art, you know what I mean? Like, I was just thinking, this is just my playtime, right? And then my daughter, Who's 17 and she's just so incredibly supportive of me, which is amazing. She loves these um, skins that I'm doing for phones and she's kind of becoming my, my marketer for the computer skins and cell phone skins. And uh, she saw this one in my sketchbook last night and she said, Mom, that would make a great skin. So we went on to the company that I use, which is called Jealous Skins. And we uploaded the image and I put, if anybody's my Facebook friend, you probably saw it go through last night because I was so excited about it, I put it up on Facebook. <laughs> These drawings actually look really cool. So now, I'm, I'm just so excited because um, I don't have to have, you know, it doesn't have to be pressure. It can be just whatever it is, is enough. And I think that's, I think that's what I want on my tombstone when I die, that, you know, whatever it was, was enough.